first senior capstone showcase. I'm Bobby Estrada, and my project was analyzing the efficacy of sanitization during a pandemic. Essentially, what I was researching is how well stores and other public places were cleaning according to COVID standards. Essentially, wiping down surfaces every 30 minutes, making sure everyone's six feet apart, typical COVID stuff. Along with that, I assessed the risk of contracting or contracting COVID-19 from different surfaces, such as this phone. And really what I found was incredibly shocking. In the beginning of my experiment, my main goal was to swab different areas in an unnamed store. I swabbed everything. I swabbed toilets, I swabbed bathroom locks, sinks, shelves, checkout machines. I got it all. And after I collected all these samples, I was then able to plate them onto my agar plates. It should be noted that the, I was using 5% sheep's blood agar, meaning it's very similar to what you would have in your, for, in your own body. So theoretically, a lot of these bacteria may be able to survive in your body. The plates, or after I plated them, the plates then sat in their incubators for 72 total hours, being checked every 12 hours starting at zero. And what surprised me the most is I was growing a fungus too. As I said before, in theory, this may have been able to survive in you, so it could have been able to survive in something like your lungs. This is only speculation. I was unable to check the species of different bacteria and fungi present. Do you take it with a grain of salt? Either way, after swabbing the shelf, I found a fungus spore. And this has some pretty serious implications. What this means is that that shelf had not been cleaned to COVID standards. So in theory, if someone had walked by there and coughed some formites on there, or some fomites on the surface, then it may have been possible to or to get COVID from that surface. As a quick side note, a fomite is any inanimate object that contains pathogens that are able to be transmitted to a host. So say I cough on this phone, that phone is now a fomite because it would have different pathogens on it that could be transferred to you or the person sitting next to you. Another thing that I found is if we were not in a pandemic, typical cleaning still would have been required. What my data showed is that it takes approximately 24 hours for any major bacterial growth to occur. So if everything was cleaned within 24 hours, just once a day, then there would be almost zero risk of contracting anything major. But this was really not the case as or as you may know, I was growing a fungus. Fungus spores typically aren't supposed to be there. The other thing I found is that Clorox wipes don't necessarily kill all of the bacteria either. Later in this presentation, I will be going over different bacteria I found and showing you the fungus. But after about 72 hours, after about 36 to 48 hours, different little bacterial cultures will be found growing. The one implication is that in the one implication that this carries is that there was a slight error in the lab here. My incubator was not set to 98.6 degrees the whole time, so that could be the reason why I got so many bacterial growths once the temperature hit 98 degrees. As another side note, it was at seven, at least 97 the entire experiment. So it had some relative accuracy. But by far, the biggest thing to take away from this experiment is wash everything. Wash your hands, clean your shopping carts with your Clorox wipes because it does help. I got no growths on any of my Clorox wipes or any of the swabs where I wiped the surface with before or 
after I swap. It's a little bit late to be saying this, but essentially what I did was I swabbed an area with one of my culture X swabs. I then wiped it down with a Clorox wipe, waited until it was dry, and then swabbed it with another culture X swab. So definitely make sure to wipe everything because the cultures or the B cultures, the ones that had been wiped after all of my B cultures showed no bacterial growth until day three. And there was only one out of those eight leading to a 0.125 per, or on average per or Petri dish. So overall, this experiment was definitely my favorite experiment that I've done so far because it was student-led. I really got the chance to study something that I thought mattered and was relevant in the world. And I'm very thankful for that experience. So overall, Senior Capstone was an amazing course and I'm so happy that I got to be one of the first people to work on it. Anyways, let's get on and show you some cultures that I had. So right here, we have one of the prime examples of the fungus I was talking about. This was or 12 hours before I concluded the experiment. So you can see the definitive growth of the fungus. And you can also see the rings of nutrients it's been taking out of the blood agar. So in your body, this would be taking nutrients out of it and stealing it for itself, just as a parasite would, but it's a fungus. Along with that, something notable is the yellow culture of bacteria. These appeared in t multiple different cultures, but they were one of the rarer bacteria colonies found. Otherwise, there was the long one above the bacteria. I'm not really sure what that was, but I know it was a much larger culture. After that, I just have another picture of my fungus as this was on the last day. So it's really clear to see how it was taking nutrients from that blood agar and the effects it would have inside of something living if it could sustain itself. After this, we have one of my favorite types of bacteria here we have the hemolytic bacteria. What hemolytic bacteria is, is it's bacteria that lyses blood cells. So it cuts into it and it seals all the nutrients, kind of like you would cut into an orange. With this bacteria here, you can definitely see little rings around it. And that's how you can tell it's hemolytic bacteria is because it's stealing all the nutrients from that blood and turning it clear. The next image is just a little bit better so right there in the middle or towards the bottom, you can see this really big pronounced colony of hemolytic bacteria. I think this was my favorite culture out of the entire experiment. I absolutely loved working with it. Something notable is you have this other little speck of yellowish white bacteria up top. That was semi-common and you're about to see how common little cultures like that were. This is one of my B plates. This B plate contained over 120 culture or colonies of bacteria by the end of the experiment. And the fun thing is this popped up overnight. This is the uh, actual colony I referenced when I said I didn't have the temperatures right. So once it hit 98.4 degrees or 98.4, 98.6 degrees, in my incubator, these all sprouted. And what I find with them, or fascinating with them, is how fast they were able to take control of their agar plate. Granted, they're the only bacteria there because this was one of the agar plates that I Clorox wiped before I swabbed. Either way, those are some of the most interesting colonies of bacteria I found. If you want to take a look at more, ask Mr. Dunn about my portfolio. I think it's awesome. 